Welcome to the RSP Film Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. We're going to take an in-depth look at Baylor wide receiver Denzel Mims. And Mims is a fun prospect because he has a lot of skills that catch the eye to the casual viewer, but he also has developed some skill sets that are going to get noticed by scouts from a technical perspective that I think are quite compelling about his game. So we're going to take a look at a 2017 game, a 2018 game, and a 2019 game just to show you some of those stages of development with that technical side of his game in addition to some of the traits that I think anyone can get pretty excited about when they watch Denzel Mims perform. Let's get started. One of the more notable things about Mims just to the casual fan is his catch radius and it's an impressive thing to see you're going to watch him here work this out route and you can see the extension right there I mean when you can fully extend with your hands over your head like that and do it in a uniform enough way that you can get both hands on the ball like this that tells you a lot about his flexibility it tells you a lot about his explosion and his concentration we're going to take a look at it up close here What's nice about this play is see how close his hands are already together. See how his thumbs are close together at the tip of this, at the top of this reach. It's a little hard to see the right hand, but you get an idea of that he's able to get his hands uniformly to the ball like this. And I can tell you that it's more difficult than it looks. There are a lot of receivers who don't do this very well who play in the NFL. Um, Cortland Sutton, who's having a fantastic season, struggles with getting both arms up uniformly when he high points the ball. And sometimes that means he spends, there's an inordinate amount of times where he catches the ball initially with one hand and he ends up fighting the ball at times because it's difficult for him to be able to secure it with the first attempt. Now, this is a high throw and it really grazes through his fingertips and doesn't touch his palms at all. And you want to catch the ball first with your fingertips because it allows you to have a softer recoil if the ball rebounds off of your fingers as opposed to off your palms. And you can see here that he's slowed the 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 spin of the ball enough that he can keep his hands shaped over the ball and bring it in without a problem. So this is a really nice job of securing the pass and stopping that spin. And you can see that his right hand is kind of at the back of the ball. But that's fine because of the uniform position he had greeting the ball. Even though the ball kind of spins through some of his grip at first, he's able to stop it enough that he can turn, turn away from the defender, and begin to secure that ball and do it without fighting it at all. Really nice work there from Mims. Another part of Mims' game that's nice is his ability to turn with a suddenness at the top of his stem into his break. Sudden snap turns, especially against tight coverage, and we're going to project to the NFL that you're going to see more tight coverage. That quick turn allows quarterbacks to be able to deliver with anticipation. It allows you to still get the enough separation that you need, even in tight coverage, to win the ball. And you're going to see him at the top left here. And remember, this is 2017. You can see him here with a little stutter during his stem and then that quick turn to the out. See that little stutter? And then right there, he snaps the turn and he's able to make the catch. And you're going to see it from another angle where he makes the catch. Good hands position. See how he has the pinkies close together there as he frames that? little clapping onto the ball, but not bad. And he gets one foot in as he secures that ball. Now, you're going to want to see him obviously get two feet in in the pro game and learn how to drag that back foot and maybe um, learn to extend a little bit more in time where he's going to catch that ball so that he can get both feet in. But the turn is really nice. And you can see the separation he gets on that turn with the defender. And we'll look at it from this angle again because that's where you're going to see it. See, they're pretty close right here, but he makes that sudden stop. That forces seven to overrun by a step, and then that quick, tight turn gets him that opportunity. And what I also like about this route that you're going to start, that kind of foreshadows his development as we start to look at the other games, is you're going to see the little stutter, that th little three step stutter and hesitation move. You kind of call it a, a three step hesitation move during the stem 
to kind of set up this little idea that he might be running the fade, but then he stops and goes back shoulder. So he's kind of setting up a deeper fade and thinking it might be going to the corner, to the to the back corner, and he ends up running this little back shoulder to the front pylon. So it's a nice little story that he tells using the little hesitation move as if this is the stem and the break point to the longer fade. Another thing right off the bat that, you know, pretty much fans will see right away is that when someone doesn't press him, doesn't play tight, he can beat a cornerback up the sideline. I mean, he just runs right by number seven here, catches the fade, deals with a little bit of contact, stays in bounds. You know, so you can see, you know, leaping ability, enough speed to be able to to win against off coverage. So that means that you're really going to have to, you know, I mean, you see the burst right there. The burst is really nice within that first 5, 10, 15 yards, really. He gets that step on the defender, and he just maintains that, even as the defender's really starting to, to work there. Now the defender looks back, and that kind of extends the lead a little bit too. But that first 10 to 15 yards, that's what you want to see is that initial acceleration, and he has that. Again, still in 2017, watch the route here. You're going to see a flat break, come back to the ball, top left. And you can see that inside foot, the toe starting to point a little bit more to the sideline. It's not completely there. It's more at about 1 or 2 o'clock as opposed to 12 o'clock if the sideline's 12 o'clock on the clock there. But you can see him break back with that outside foot and come back to the ball and make the catch. And... Let's just look at that one more time because he sets up this break reasonably well, well too. You can see that he extends the leg. It's not a complete, you know, bend of the knees in a way where you're really dropping the weight fully. You can see he's kind of angled there. I often say that good breaks look like a receiver sitting in a chair. He looks like he's sitting on a bar stool at this point. But again, it's a good start, and you're going to see that when he makes that break, it's still a sharp break tacks the ball comes back to it and best yet instead of continuing to move watch how he kind of leans away as he makes a catch has his feet in the air and he kind of and he makes a turn upfield immediately it's a really nice transition upfield very conscious of trying to make that make that quick turn so he doesn't waste a lot of time and gets himself yardage before seven can come downhill or 14 can come in from the other direction now watch it from this close-up view and you got to get to see it a little bit more right there there's the break could be a little bit tighter but it is a flatter break looks for the ball well you can see him catching it close to his body that he can do that maybe you know and it's at the waist level I mean again not a bad catch but watch see how he kind of leans back on his toe and brings the other one down and he's looking to the inside that turn to the inside to, to gauge who's there what he sees and then the immediate turn upfield doesn't square up and 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 try to use some sort of juke move. He just immediately gets upfield. That's what you want to see in the NFL. Some of the better athletes, they want to fake everybody out and go for the big play to the point that they end up losing more yards or end up you know lo leaving yards on the field that they could have had just by turning up field and oftentimes just breaking a tackle. They break a tackle from that sudden turn. Defenders are unprepared. But this is nice. He gets an extra, what, five, six yards on the play? Good enough. And I like the consistency we're seeing here. This is a stop route. Kind of a little three-step break. Turns and frames. Catches the ball. And see as he catches the ball, he's already turning his hips downfield so that he can begin transitioning you know, as a runner, but he keeps his eyes on the ball. He's framed his chest still to the quarterback while turning his hips so that he can get uphill, stiff arm the defender, get him another yard off of it. But watch, I mean, see as he makes that break, he's turning back with his, with his chest, but then he keeps his body there and he begins to lean downhill, but he's still looking the ball in and securing it. Good job putting it also under his sideline arm. 
there's no completion here on this play, but bottom left, I just like the pacing that you're going to see with this route. It just gives you an idea of where his game is heading. You're seeing him wanting to tell a story slower than he accelerates at the break point. So he's trying to give a defender some different tempos. He's trying to give him some different footwork variations of, of step stride. He's, he's given a little bit of a dip of the shoulders and head at the top of the stem right there. A little violence, a little change of something, you know, kind of more peaceful and uniform to something violent. Trying to, you know, tell a story on the defender to be able to get him to bite on some things. And if you can vary things up just enough, with every route, you can start to get into a defender's head. And we're going to see that a little bit more as he develops over the years here. Tight man coverage. We're going to see an attempt to press him. And I see I like the job that Mims does here in terms of being able to swat away the hands of the defender. Watch the defender reach out and he swats him away. Nice job being able to meet the hands of the defender and to be able to prevent the defender from getting into his body and then turning upfield and, you know, again, kind of leaning in the stool rather than sitting in the chair, but the defender overruns it and the ball's already in the air, makes a catch with his hands, turns upfield. Nothing happens there in terms of yardage after the catch, but he transitions well still. What I'm looking for when I'm watching players is do they have a good process? Sometimes the results aren't there, but is the process consistent and technically sound or conceptually sound? And in his game, it is both. You see that pretty often here. And as a result of that, you start to see some big plays on plays that maybe he shouldn't have made. Looking back for the ball, defender is able to cut that off. It's underthrown. But look at the job he does, being able to tip the ball away from the defender and make a, a catch with his fingertips, with soft hands, good body awareness. We're going to see it from the other angle here in a moment. Watch him, again, uniform hands, good reach, uniform hands, and he ends up getting one up there because the other kind of gets banged away. But he he's able to at least defend the pass, pull the arm away, still keep his eyes on the ball, and watch again soft hands to catch that ball, fingertip catch and then just sound awareness one foot in very good job and he ends up getting a second one in there too with the toe and you can see that he can palm the ball without any issue there being able to get a good grip on it which is going to be a nice thing to have when you're dealing with contested catches or contested situations and he does that very well nice body awareness good concentration see the fingertips first fingertips first then on the palm it's kind of a soft recoil as a result of that and he's able to control it well done once again we're going to see that boundary awareness bottom left here he's going to run this post and catch the ball at the end line oh that's not the one next play here we go He's going to run the post here from the stack behind the, the receiver outside. Make the catch, turn, get one foot in. like to see maybe the second foot get in there. But, you know, that's the thing he's going to have to work on next is really getting both feet in on a consistent basis. And you can see here, the he doesn't catch the ball as cleanly as you would like. But he has the hands again in a good position you know, the thumbs could be a little tighter together. The ball goes through, but he gets enough of the fingertips on it that when the ball rebounds off of his chest, it's not as violent. He can make the second attempt, still has one foot in, catches with his fingertips. Good job. Because really, the good technique can afford second chances on the ball. So good technique there. Doesn't it's it could be better, but it's good enough to afford him that second chance when it rebounds off his chest. It's not a violent recoil of the ball, and he makes the play. Here's a closer look at it. See how the thumbs are pretty close together, and you can see that rebound wasn't bad at all for him. 
Let's move on to next year against Oklahoma, 2018. You're going to see him top right, and this isn't a, a targeted play, but you're going to see him against tighter man coverage, use a little bit of a hesitation move to the inside, work outside, use his hands a little bit. And I want you to note that because as this game goes along, you're going to start to see him use a variety of hesitation or stretch you know, type of moves to get into the defender's head. Another aspect of Min's game that I just absolutely love, and I think he's one of the best at the, this among the wide receiver prospects that I've seen, is blocking. He's an excellent blocker. Watch him bottom left work against the cornerback. See how he's chest to chest with the defender. He doesn't lock his arms out. You want to be chest to chest so that you can control him, stay inside, and you can move that defender easier when you're doing that. You can see as the defender tries to redirect on first look right here, defender tries to go inside, no doing. Mims is able to move outside and turn him away and push him backwards. The defender then has to kind of rip away and work downfield here. And while he makes the tackle technically, our running back has fallen down and lost his balance at this point. But Mims does a good enough job here, really attacking first, getting inside the pads, staying chest to chest to make an impact as a runner and prevent 13 from getting downhill to get in on the tackle earlier and you get a first down out of the play. Now here's where you see some improvement from last year or from 2017 to 2018 and it's with his breaks. Watch this break. You're going to see right here one long step. Then you're going to see the bend here. He is not sitting in a stool now. He's sitting in a regular straight back chair. He really bends the knee, the knees well here. Comes to a sudden stop. Lots of separation on this play for this type of route. Watch the long step right there. Drops the weight. This is much better than 2017. So you're seeing progress with his game. As a route runner, good catch with the hands. Well done. The effort is a blocker. We're seeing it consistently in this game. Here he is top right. You're going to work as a receiver, work outside to the fade. And then he turns back to look to whether he needs to transition downfield. Sees the potential for that to be happening. Gets inside the chest once again, chest to chest. Drives the defender out of the picture. Love that. You know, this isn't half-assed blocking here that we're getting from Denzel Mims. We're seeing effort. We're seeing technically, you know, pretty sound skills chest to chest. He needs to get the, the left arm a little bit more to the inside here. But the defender's back was turned to. So you can see that it was probably a little more work. But he wants to kind of avoid having his hand on the back. But overall, really like what he's doing there as a block. And once again, we're going to see separation from Mims. And he's going to get some... Cornerback's going to get some help from the safety over top, but watch as he returns to the screen in terms of visually. Look at the step he has on the defender. He has a good step on the defender, and he's even pulling away as the defensive back, the safety, comes in to break this up, even though the pass is overthrown. But you can see that initial separation. Good chop as well. You can see, let's see if we can show it one more time. You'll see the chop upper right. That chop through there, that got him the separation along with his acceleration. More blocking that I like. Watch him top right. Watch him just attack this defender with intensity. And he just stays with it. I mean, he he's a bulldog in this way. I love it. Hands into the chest, accelerates into the defender, gets him off balance, not expecting it, and stays chest to chest. And redirects with the defender and Matt gets square once more. Yeah, this guy. This guy wants to be a football player, not just a, a wide receiver, if you know what I mean. He wants to be a complete football player. Love that. Top right, you're going to see him here on the slant. Or the post, excuse me. Break inside underneath his receiver who runs off. The two defenders here, a little two-man route combination. He breaks underneath. Kind of a switch route type of thing. And look at the extension for the ball. No problem extending with the defender trailing and getting contact to him as he makes the catch. 
pulls it in nicely. Fingertip grab. You can see you can play inside, you can play outside. Definitely can go up for the ball well. I mean, the fact, again, hands uniform. He, not an easy catch, but a very good one. Once again, top left. You're going to see a similar route to what he ran last year where he runs that a little out. This time, nice toe. Well, again, a toe point is a little bit more towards, you know, 1, 2 o'clock on the clock. If the clock is at 12 o'clock at the sideline. Comes back to the ball, though, very well. Nice tight turn. Hands up. Great high point. I mean, look how close the hands are together on that ball as the defender's, you know, at his hip. And he's able to land that one foot in bounds. See where the foot is between the legs of number six. Makes that catch. Gets one foot in bounds. It's a beautiful job by him. And just consistently attacking the ball on routes where he breaks back to the quarterback with the defender in the area. And just a real good comfort level on throws above his head against impending contact. And the boundary awareness, I mean, again, you're not seeing two feet in bounds on a consistent basis. So it's something he's going to have to work on. But you can see the potential for that to happen. Haven't really seen him drop the ball very often. Here's a drop after contact that you could really say is, a bet, is more of a well-defended play than an actual drop. Because it's going to take this ball's at his back shoulder. He has to turn back to make the catch. Defender's tight to him and trail anyway. And the defender already has his arm on the ball as he secures it with his hands in the high point position. I mean, if this ball's, if he's led a little bit more, this is a much easier catch. It's not as high. It's a much easier catch. Defender makes a great play being able to get his hands on the ball tight and knock it away. The vendor has the advantage through this particular point because of the, the target placement. So I wouldn't count, you know, you could count this as a drop if you want, if you were charting it. But I would look at this and the way I would probably define it is that it's a well-defended pass. It's a pass breakup more than it is a drop. More route development. Watch this break and attack of the ball coming back to it. It's top left. We'll show it one more time here. Watch the long step. Long step. Three steps into the break. Comes back to the ball. So it's a three-step break beginning with the long break. One, two, three. Breaks back to the ball. High points. Takes the hit to his legs. No problem. Comes down with it. More route development, single left. You're going to see it here. He's not targeted, but I love the development here with the stem. You're going to see a dip to the post, a little bit of a stutter, or a little bit of a change of footwork that kind of sells that post and then breaks back to the outside or upfield. And even sells it with the head turning inside. So you're seeing storytelling in the stem, especially with longer routes. And you also get the sale of, you know, pads over knees, head up, turns inside, comes back outside, like it. You're going to see Mims outside twin left here, and he's going to fake out the defender here. Defender and Mims might bang knees, and it causes the defender to fall down. But the real point of this isn't whether or not they bang knees, but whether the move that set this up for that close quarters contact or potential contact really baits the defender to get him out of position where that happens. Defender tries to jam a little bit. Good job using the one hand in there, working to the inside. And then you see him turn back to the quarterback. 
Get the defender looking to the quarterback there, and then watch him take the back of the defender. That hard step and plant back to the outside to get behind the defender's back. And the defender gets crossed up there. Maybe he bangs knees with Mims. It's hard to see. He falls down. But it's the it's the intent. It's the process. Once again, Mims is setting this up. One part of Mims' route running that I'm not in love with and I haven't seen him really improve yet is double moves. When it looks like he's trying to give a double move, he really doesn't sell it as fully as he can. He doesn't really drop down as low as he could. The head's down. He does stop. He's in the stool as opposed to in the chair. Defender really doesn't bite on it who's playing zone, and he's just he just kind of continues to running downfield to get depth. The ball's hung up in the air a bit. I do like the attack where he's coming to attack with his arms forward, but the defender has position, and he's able to get his hand on the ball and pull it away as he comes down. Should he have caught it? Probably. Should have been a better throw? Yeah. Should the defender have been had a chance to knock it out with the position that's here? Yes, and the, posi and the defender did what he was supposed to do. So again, it's not a play where, yeah, I might record it as a drop after contact, but I'm not going to look at this and say he has a problem with plays after contact. Consistently, what we're seeing is a really good job of sudden breaks where he breaks back to the quarterback or turns and stops. Here's one in zone. Gets, you know, gets stopped pretty fast. Stop, stops pretty fast. Makes a nice target there. Faces... The defender, or faces the quarterback, excuse me. Nice stop right there. Good depth. Kind of slides back to the quarterback, just maybe a step. Good catch after contact. More blocking for Mims, top left. Watch him transition chest to chest inside the pads there. See how his elbows are bent. The defender's kind of stretched out and has his arms out, but... Mims even looking back towards the ball carrier has his, you know, has his elbows bent. He's trying to stay chest to chest. And you can see late in this, he continues to work, move his feet. Defender tries to redirect. Mims is still on him, pushing him around. You know, this, this is good, right to the whistle. And throughout this game, whenever there's a tighter, there's tighter coverage against him, you're seeing either a one-step stutter or one-step kind of stretch step, or you're seeing a two-step move like here. Watch the two, one, two, and, and then a, an arm over or swipe to get upfield. You're seeing him use one, two, or three-step moves. It's not the same thing all the time. So often I watch wide receivers who really just lean on one set of footwork. They don't have a variety in their bag, in their toolbox, let's say. And Mims is showing the propensity to, to vary up his, his use of footwork to work against defenders. Here's another high target with contact impending, bottom left. Makes the catch, deals with the wrap, breaks th free of it. Doesn't get a lot after the catch, but still. I like the the eyes up but the head down. Sells that vertical well. Good work. Here's a three-step move down at the bottom left here. Tight coverage. A little arm drumming. You can see it's just... It's different on a regular basis. He's giving you the variety. He's making the defender think a little bit. He's trying to set him up sometimes where if he knows he's not likely targeted, that he can see what's going to work against that defender. I'm Drew Lieberman of the Sideline Hustle, who you should follow on YouTube, calls it stealing a release. And he's showing the ability to steal the release in terms of giving you know plays where he's not going to be necessarily involved trying things to see what works so that he can use what works on the next target that is likely to come his way another nice route above here even though he doesn't get 
open or the receiver or the quarterback doesn't target him top left watch the the two-step move right there the two-step hesitation to the inside and then he sells that vertical to the inside pads down eyes up you know really selling that and then watch him then dip back to the shoulder you know to the back of the cornerback and force that defender to turn his hips Telling the story, little stutter, dip inside or dive inside, as you might call it, to really sell that vertical, and then take the back. Again, good concepts. May not get open here, may not get targeted here, but he's doing the right things, and you know he has the athletic ability to get open. You know that he can catch. You know that tight coverage isn't a problem for him. So when you put all of that together, you can understand why this guy is a promising receiver. No target here, top left, but again, here's a different release pattern. One little stretch step inside out, begins to, to sell that, but then gets the defender to turn his hips, takes his back to the inside, and swats away the hand. So his reactions to what defenders do is good. He's processing what defenders do quickly and finding solutions to it. That tells you that he's not just kind of a one note or kind of rote player because there are a lot of players with great athletic ability where they just they memorize one or two moves. That's all they do, but they don't understand how to apply it on the field and they look robotic when they do it. Now, they win in the, in the college game because they're faster than everybody else or they're stronger than everybody else until they face top competition or a patient defender who just understands what's, what, the, what the receiver's trying to do. But Mims here, I like the fact that he's reading what the defender's doing in real time and making adjustments. That's very promising. Top left, you're going to see a rare drop from Mims here, at least in the two games that we've seen thus far. Um, but the route's nice. You're going to see that that hesitation move, kind of a two-step hesitation to the outside. Plant, get the head turned a little bit to the outside. Defender turns his hips, breaks back inside, looks for the ball. Should have caught it here, but didn't secure it. Turned upfield, drops it, trying to turn upfield. Because he probably thought he had a touchdown here, splitting the safety in the corner. Or at least had some chance a chance at it but the hesitation move the kind of the two-step hezzy right there and then the the stick to sell it get the defender to turn this is a nice slant so you're seeing he can run the fade he can run the back shoulder he can run the out he can run you know a sideline curl he can run you know he can break back to the ball well he can you get the slant out of him get the post routes out of him in the red zone, some boundary promise, some work with his hands. When defenders reach for him, he's able to block the hands away from getting into his body. He's good at getting his hands into the body of defenders as a blocker. <laughs> What's not to like about this so far? Here's another route I like, top left. Again, Always looking to take the back of the defender and get him turned. Defenders turn to the inside. He jabs, swats his hand away, works to the outside. Sets it up well, too, with that dive to the inside immediately. A little, the, the defender turns. He takes the back and works upfield. We'll move on to 2019. Here's Mims in the opener against Stephen F. Austin. Top right, watch him transition as a blocker. Set up here, get good square, watch him shoot his arms with an uppercut motion, or at least enough of an uppercut motion to get contact, but he continues to get inside and get close enough so that he can get chest to chest with the defender enough to turn him to the outside and stay with him. Good grip, good position, good footwork. Very nice job. And the nice thing about this is I see this so many times that Receivers give up here, and as a result of this, the runner who's making a nice, nice work here in the open field here oftentimes would not have this lane 
if not for this block over here that has the defender way out of the way. Top right, not targeted, but again, a little bit of a hesitation move to the outside. You see that outside and then a stick to the inside. Let's see if you can see it. A little hesitation and then back to the outside. But he opens up to the outside, gives a little dip right there, and then works back to the outside. This is a nice slant below for for Mims. And there's some things he does that reminds me of a, a route I watched um, Stefan Diggs run against Azuye, Azuye um, the Dallas Cowboys cornerback, on Sunday Night Football in Week 10. And, and it was on the same side of the field here. You're going to see him have a little bit of a hesitation move and an arm over. But watch how he begins the route looking up at the defender squares and looks up gets outside the defender i mean gets that stick so that the, he's really well to the outside hip of the defender and then comes over top with the arm looks back to the ball but at first again head up head up eyes up straight forward sells that he's going to work into the defender get into his toes and then make the move to the outside stutter to that outside, turn his hips. And as he uses his hand here, he's still looking at the defender, looking at the reach of the defender so he can engage where his hands need to be and then turns to look for the ball. So he completes the process of getting past the defender and it's all done in a very quick order. And when you have a defender that tight to you and you have to get that release within a matter of, oh, about a yard, because he's only a yard off the line when he makes this move and he's released at about two yards downfield, you have to be precise with your movements. You have to have, that plan has to be precise. You have had to rehearse these types of moves to the point that you can react to what the defender does well in case it doesn't go exactly as planned. This is a good sign that Mims is doing his work. He's learning what he needs to do to become a good route runner. More blocking with Denzel Mims outside right. What's nice about this play is that he, you know, he hesitates and gives a little bit of a swat here to get outside. He isn't targeted, but watch him transition. He doesn't break down and square on this one. He just turns and with his feet moving, still is able to deliver his hands inside and really punch an attack and then drive that man back. Just has a really good feel for getting into a defender and doing damage and just transitioning from receiver to blocker. It's just freaking fantastic, man. Cause you, these, this is what creates big plays in the passing game on shorter and intermediate passes. And when your teammates block for you and they, they relish it, that they attack it because if the ball carrier breaks a tackle, you're the one, you know, number five's the one that's going to be the reason why that goes from being just a, a a bigger gain after the catch to being a huge play. And there's no looking back. I mean, he sometimes looks back to gauge the ball carrier, but there's no looking back to see if he should block or not. He just does it. He does his job. He's not waiting for some, he's just not looking to see if he has to. That's the sign that this guy likes blocking. This is a zone route. You can see the defender playing a little bit more onto the outside, and he turns to the outside and is looking at the quarterback. And Mim says, well, if you're going to give me your back, I'm going to take it. And he continues to stem into the back, into the blind spot of the receiver until it's time to make the blind spot of the corner until it's time to make the break. And he does. And that gives him that space in the middle of this triangle of defenders. It's simple. It's a simple concept, but you know, it's something that you have to understand. He's always looking to take the back so that he can control the break point and get that extra step with the defender, not being able to see when he's going to make that break and makes another man miss, get some extra yards. All good. All right. You're going to see top left here. And again, 
instead of a two-step move or a three-step move, he understands what, given the route that he's running, it's a shorter route with a quick break against tight coverage. One step with his release here. That one step here. One step right there. Gets outside. Really sits down into that route. That's a nice sit down right there into that break. Snap turn. Defender overruns it. Makes the catch. Well done. And then a, a quick transition turn up field. And he fights for, for extra yards. Doesn't really get much. But the effort's there. And the process is good. Again, everything about the process is good on this play. That one little step inside out. The attack downhill. Gets the defender running with him. Puts on the brakes. Really good drop of the weight. Snap turn. Loses the defender. Turns him completely around. Good catch tight with his hands. Immediate turn inside. And then fights for whatever he can get here. Let's give it a close-up look here. There's that one step. Downhill. Very quick turn. And what I like is see the hand? See how he's the inside arm up? He's anticipating any type of jam. He wants to get his arm over it. He's already thinking ahead there. He doesn't swat out, though, because he sees that the defender isn't going to reach for him, isn't going to try to jam him. But he's prepared. See how his eyes are up, hands are up, ready to, to either swat or to be able to use the arm over. Once it doesn't happen, he just keeps moving. Now, we're not going to get to see the full action of this little shake and bake here in week two. But the defender's playing off coverage. Mims down bottom to the left here. And watch him sell the post. And that turns the defender around. I mean, look how far away the defender is on this particular route. And we're going to watch it right there. See if you can see it as he exits the screen here. He gives this little bait inside. Nice head fake and dip of the shoulder. Watch it one more time. All right, still not in love with his double moves, but there's a little bit more bend here in the in the the knees and hips on this particular play. But I love the break still. Watch the break right here. Three-step break, really sharp. Defender still tight to him, takes the defender's back all the way. One, two, three, and the nice spin. He gets both feet in bounds on this play. Here comes the here comes the break. One, two, three. Well done. Now, when it comes to softer breaks, more angular double moves, man, he looks good. Bottom left here against Iowa State this year. He's going to run the out and up. Really sells it well. You're going to see it in the next um, angle here. But he does a nice job here being able to pull down the ball, track it over his shoulder. Watch this. Bend to the post. As he gives a little bit of a turn there, that nice long hard step, and then look at look at how he bends that as well. Not as a, a, a massive toe point, but it looks like he might be breaking it to the outside here because when you break the out, you always want to sell the post a little bit. He does that, turns as if he's going to break on that post on on that out, turns his head as if he's going to really sell that and make a flat break. And then turns up field, and that, that's all it needs for that defender to slow down and honor that. And wow, I love the hands usage here. Not that part, the catch. But again, sells that well. A little post, out, up, turn back, and watch the attack. Look how tight the hands are. Look how, look, that's like a triangle he's got going on there to web catch that, that ball. That's fantastic. And this is pretty sweet too. Set up as if he's going to block, pull down, rip down, kind of. Completely beats the defender here. But then the ball's behind him. He angles back, still able to turn and make that catch. 
But watch how he sets this up if he's going to block. He uses his skill as a blocker to bait the defender with the play action. Gets into his chest. Pulls down violently. Gets past him. That's one of the great things about being a good blocker is that they're going to scout you. They're going to know that that's what you do well. And when you go up to block, they're going to believe you. And when you have violent hands and you work on having violent hands to attack, you can use them to your advantage to release as well. Let's see if they show a close-up of this particular play. Yes. Really nice. So he gets the hands inside, pulls down with the outside with the inside arm. Good job looking for the ball all the way and that tight attack with the to the ball look at that look at the hand position there very tight together beautiful here's another angle of it sweetness that's a that's a heck of I also like we're watching this corner route and he's making the break here. Watch how he deals with contact around his waist. He's able to turn and look for the ball, get his hands in position here, still deal with contact and not get distracted and pull away, track that ball, late hands. Doesn't, doesn't tip off when the ball's coming, just reaches up just as it's overhead to make the catch. Two feet in bounds. Get a nice pull down up top right here on the fade route. Good reach and turn. Just graceful. That's what you'd expect from what you've seen of him thus far. Attacks the ball. See how the arms are forward here. Attacks it at the earliest point. Catches it at the high point. Hands tight together. Good turn away to pull down. Gets both feet in bounds. That's what you want to see. A little bit more improvement with the boundary awareness. Owning that sideline, it's still a little tight to the sideline, but good awareness to get both feet in. But I can't say the boundary awareness is consistent with every route. Here's the out route. He's able to get one foot in, but he's not dragging the other. And he's not really in position as he leaps for that ball to be able to do so. The plan in terms of how to adjust to the ball and win the high ball and still be able to have body position where he doesn't kick up that inside leg so much you know that's something that he's going to have to get better at I've seen plays with Mims in the open field you know but you know this is probably the most impressive one I've seen he's up at the top right he swats the reach down of the defender here and off coverage works the works the the slant or the deep slant or the post to the inside catches it with his hands and then watch the little dip here and the little head fake. Look at that little head fake there on that defensive back as he works across the middle right there. A little okey doke. And then I love the finish here. Again, as physically as is a blocker, as comfortably as is the catch point, as a runner, drop the pads. That's right. Drop the pads and push. And yeah, you don't score on the play. But you're going to attack. You're going to finish strong. The mentality of this kid, this is what I like. You want football players who play physical, who who don't mind, you know, don't mind physical contact and who initiate it and who can take it. We've seen a lot of routes against man and off coverage, but what about routes where it break into a zone here? He's top right or top left, excuse me. And you're going to watch the one step and then break to the inside and watch how he kind of slows down here knowing that there's a defender to the inside here and he doesn't want to run too far. He wants to be able to slow down, knowing that the ball's going to be in a tight window, makes the catch, takes the wrap, no problem. Not distracted by the by two defenders in the area, knowing that he could get a, a pretty big hit there, but also slows down to make himself available in that window. So there you have it, Denzel Mims, Baylor wide receiver. Really like what we're seeing from him. I mean, certainly some red zone capabilities there, both as a timing route player 
also as a 50-50 route guy, someone who shows you route skills on the perimeter to be able to work back to the ball, but also someone who can go deep on you, and also someone that can work to the inside and make plays after the catch, who's not afraid to get his hands dirty and play physical football and not um, distracted by physical play against him. I think this guy still has growth potential to his game because you're seeing him continuously learn in terms of developing more footwork patterns, being ready to use his hands in different ways. He's improved with his breaks in terms of the sharpness of his breaks. You can see that he has some break patterns that are down pretty tight, and he has snap turns. Boundary awareness has to get a little bit better on certain routes. Um, you know, Certainly, he's going to have to develop more moves with his footwork and his handwork, especially the use of his hands. He's going to have to continue to develop that um, and, and develop different ways to to, to work free, but he, he's pretty good already with the chop and with the swipes. So that's not bad at all. Um, and I, and I think more than anything, it's just a matter of continually getting better about, you know, how to work with his quarterback on option routes, recognize certain types of, um, coverages so that he can, um, really maximize the versatility that he can offer an NFL offense and just continue to get consistent with his game. And hopefully he's going to be able to develop that for the next level in terms of being a guy that you can really count on here. And from what I'm seeing, you know, there's a lot of potential for that. So thanks again for watching. For more RSP Boiler Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Matt Waldman's RSP Film Room, and my site, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.